Having trouble with your site speed? You know, a pretty common cause for this is having images that are just way too big on your site. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing that you have a 6K photograph slider of your product on your homepage, but if it takes 20 minutes to load, I'm afraid no one's gonna be around to see it. So what can be done? Well, I'm Alex, and today we're gonna to be talking about optimizing images for your website in this episode of Giant Wednesday. So let's start before you've even picked up the camera using the right image. Now, before we even mention file size, format, or anything like that, it's important for your SEO that your images themselves are the best they can be. It can have more of an effect on your SEO than you might think. Now, a good image for your site will be relevant to your page, emphasizing your key point and enhancing your user's experience. If you can, try to use your own photos because I promise you people can spot stock images from a mile away and they don't like it. And that's not just me saying that. In fact, a debt company saw a 35% increase in signups when they replaced the stock image on their homepage to a photo of their founder. So yeah, if there's that too good to be true photo of a team of young, beautiful looking people people laughing over a spreadsheet on your page. You know, the sort of stuff that happens in an office. Take this as a message to change it to something a bit more authentic. Okay, so now you have the right picture, let's talk about using the right file dimensions. Now that you have your photograph, image, or even graphic, don't just go uploading that straight into your site. You'll need the image to be the right dimensions. There's no one size fits all approach get it, to image dimensions for your site, as it depends on your page design and layout. Here's a few tips on the right things to do. Make sure your website design is responsive. If it's not already, you'll really want to take care of this quick. This just means that the design of your website changes automatically to fit the user's screen, be it a mobile mobile phone or tablet, including your images. If you're using WordPress, all images that you upload are responsive by default. How good's that? Don't exceed 2560 pixels wide because this is the standard resolution width for 27 and 30 inch monitors, so there will never really be any real reason to exceed that dimension. You can make the image size whatever height works for your site design, but remember that bigger dimensions normally mean they'll take up more space. But how do you get small file size images on your site without sacrificing quality and having a pixelated mess? Let's talk about the next part, reducing your file size. File compression is key to having high quality images on your site that don't take up gigabytes of space. You can use tools like Google's PageSpeed Insights to check out the files and images on your web page that are the heaviest, and then look at reducing these file sizes to improve page speed. If you're using WordPress for your site, there are some awesome plugins such as Resize Image After Upload and Imsanity, which automatically resizes your large image uploads. Pretty handy, right? But sometimes the prevention's better than the cure, so let's walk through the steps for compressing your images for the best image quality. There are loads of free tools that you can use to resize your images before you upload. Those include TinyPNG, Optimizilla, or the free version of Kraken, which we'll link below. These sites reduce your image's file size with only a negligible effect on the quality of your images. You want to aim to compress your images to around 100 kilobytes or under 200 kilobytes for full width images. So have a play around with those tools and find the right balance between quality and size. Of course, you'll be able to get away with a few medium size images if that's absolutely necessary, but there's no reason to have a large file sitting on your site and clogging up your load time if you can do something about it. If you're using Photoshop, you can do this yourself. You can resize your image with image resize, or alternatively, you can create a new document with your required dimensions and drop your image into that. You'll then want to click File, Save for Web Legacy, where you can play around with the compression options while seeing a preview of what the image looks like and the file size in the bottom left corner. We're racing through these, so let's check out our penultimate point, naming your images. So you found the right file dimensions and size that works for you. Now, don't get ahead of yourself and save an image like this as employeephoto1.jpg. Instead, use descriptive keywords separated by hyphens, such as man smiling with computer implants.jpg. I felt weird saying that. Another good tip is to optimize your image alt tags. These help web crawlers figure out what your images are about, and they're also used by screen readers to describe the image to visually impaired users. Describe your images well without overstuffing keywords. A good best practice is to think of how you'd describe the image to someone who can't see it. Image extension. Now, if you don't know your PNGs from your JPEGs, this step could leave you stumped. When in doubt, you should always choose the JPEG file format for your website images. These are light in file size and they're very easy to compress. If you're after images with transparent backgrounds, however, you should use the PNG format. For logos and icons, use the SVG format. These take up minimal space and can be resized as needed on your site. Now you will need Adobe Illustrator to create and save logos into an SVG file format, or you can use an online SVG converter 
but be wary that results will vary drastically. And if you want more information on how to make logos in the SVG format, let us know in the comment section and we'll see what we can do. With all of these, just make sure you're watching the file size, making sure not to exceed the size we outlined in our previous step. So there you have it. That should be everything you need to give your website a long overdue diet. So the next time your site steps on the scales, it will be the biggest loser. In, in a good way. How much have you managed to save on your site by reducing your image sizes? We want to hear your story, so let us know. If there were any steps you were hoping we'd cover and we didn't, then let us know. Drop them in the comments section and we'll do our best to answer them. It goes without saying, but if you like what we do, you can support the channel by subscribing for even more great content like this. This has been Giant Wednesday and I've been Alex. Thank you for watching. We're at a desk now. Everything's different. Please subscribe. Could make the image size whatever height I got something scratchy in my throat. <coughs> it's all the talking I've done today. Slowly dying.